Let's look into the film. In this video, we will be looking at Austin Phil Eo. He is a defensive tackle, a tweener at that. He played at the weight of 300 pounds, 305 pounds, as well as 293. He's currently now 285. He had to slim down for pro day, and everybody know how that goes. Nevertheless, the Oregon's defense is a weird one. They had him playing upright he played on the edge they played him inside three tech as one and as well as the nose tackle standing up even fronts odd fronts you name it the organ pretty much do that over there on the defensive side now one of the other things that you have to pay attention to he's not the best pass rusher but he can get there on top of that this guy was once ranked ninth overall and the nation as it relates to the interior defensive guy in his sophomore year he was third in the pac 12. nevertheless when you look at his skill set he do possess the ability to get upfield he do have trouble disengaging he plays a little upright a little bit too much on his pass rush technique but he get there and i call him the polynesian warrior he gets upfield he's not afraid and on this play right here you see he have a little issues of disengaging and on this part right here, you have problems disengaging. Number 63 got away with a hold there at the end. Nevertheless, you want to be able to disengage off of this and get to the quarterback once he got the guy beat. And he had 63 on skates. And he plays with that tenacity. It's just a little raw as it relates to pass rushing, but you're getting a true run stopper. Oregon held over five teams under 100 yards, and he plays through the echoes of the whistle, as you see right here not allowing the opposition to get around the edge there he plays with great angles and he's six foot three at this point i believe he was like 293 ish and he's not afraid he's not afraid to to go all out and make sure that the opposition is not getting more and more yards and look where he started at he's standing up right inside you know the Oregon defense is just different let's just call that a spade a spade right <laughs> but he's able to contain and squeeze the actual quarterback off to the edge they credit him for a tackle on this one because he pushed him out of bounds there so that's still good now he gets off his block here make the tackle downfield we know we like to see that hustle mentality out of any player and you see that out of his skill set Yes, he got a lot of things to work on. He's undrafted for a reason. I believe because they never put him in a solid position. They had him everywhere. Nevertheless, when you're versatile in a sense, you get those opportunities to play all over the field with great power comes great responsibilities, right? <laughs> but you're not running on him. You're not. He, he is a down here guy. He looks for the the run lanes and he tried to close them off and seal them off big number 99 he's there he's gonna shut all of that down believe me when i looked at his film i was sitting there saying man this guy have no problems chasing getting upfield and even on this play playing through the echoes of the whistle making sure that he feels get the contact he loves contact by the way swipe and look at look how strong he is he's very strong now look how he just knocked the opposition out the way get off of me get you ain't looking that's okay tell me how the grass tastes and then he goes and pursue the quarterback it's all about creating pressure still look how strong just get off me yeah i love saying that especially off of an interior guy strong I, that means that he got a lot of room to work on hopefully the dallas cowboys look at him and say okay we're going to figure out what you do best and we're going to keep you at that particular spot he's not a three down guy he's a run stuffer so in a running situation you will put number 99 he's wearing number 58 for the dallas cowboys so we'll be looking at him with number 58 all right so when we look at this he gets off his block that's a sack i like it and of course he's pretty much playing on the outer edge here this is a gap this is double a gap he's going to shoot through the b right here they playing like a wide formation and he gets there squeezes right through that gap and get the quarterback down they credit this as a sack and he don't have a lot of pass rush moves and he will tell you hey he's going to work on that and one of his biggest things that he will always bring up is working out with Penasuel. you know you would think that hey he would be one of the better edge rushers or interior guy working out with him nevertheless it's still like iron sharpen iron steel sharpen steel 
although he was raw in a lot of situations, he still learned. And that's what we like to see every year, a player getting better on his craft and better in every situation. Not everybody is going to be a Hall of Famer, right? So these guys are not all finished products when they are drafted to a team. So there are ways that these guys can improve but when you look at the hustle mentality the mindset to stop the run those are things that we really need get off his block there and make the runner pay we want to see that and i love seeing it look at the energy he brings to the table yes i love it cowboy nation look get off of his block yeah and he's gonna have to work on some disengagement moves he he requires or or he relies on straight power look how he got his hand he struck into the inside that's good now he got to start setting up his next move he already got the power he walks him back inside and then he just got to chop that down and make sure he get to the runner better that that's the only thing that you can really say in his scouting report they say he got short arms so he's going to have to maneuver that thing out the way and work on those things. Work on your chop. Work on your flipping your hips. Getting those shoulder pad turned. Those are some of the small techniques that he will have to work on with his old hands. However, I love the motor. I love the plan through the echoes of the whistle. And if you can bring him on slowly, then I think that he will fit fine within the confines of the system because you always need a guy that's not afraid to get down inside. Look how he squeezes out. This should have been a sack for him, but he danced around and he held containment and he got a half of a sack off of this one because he made contact. So that's still good. It's in the backfield. It's in the backfield. He had six sacks in his career over there in Oregon, north of 11 tackles for loss. So we know that the production can be there, you know. So I like seeing this part of it. Anytime you get into the backfield, let's see how he got off his release. Yeah, get there. Okay, free release, basically. And he still get credit for a half of a sack off of that play. I love the containment aspect of it. That's cognitive. He plays a great deed with angles. So watch how he come through there. From the opposite side of the field, here he is right here. And he's going to squeeze right through there, bowl right through his other guys. He's making sure that that tackle is there and he get there. I love seeing this Cowboy Nation. So when we look at this guy, Austin, I think that he will be a great rotational piece. May not even make the team, but if he can make the, the practice squad or in a situation where there's injuries or let's not leave out the fact that training camp is here. So he got to fight for it and claw for it. And everybody knows every now and then you may get that one guy that wanted more than the next guy. They're looking at the opportunity and saying to himself, hey, this is everything I want. Hey, I'm going to be the Polynesian warrior out there and I'm going to make sure that I earn every inch on the field. Being on time, preparing his mind. It's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have the opportunity and not be prepared. So come training camp and come preseason game, he got to show up and show out. Remember, every opportunity, you got to take advantage of it. So we'll see how hungry he will be out there. Post me your thoughts. Post me your concerns of Austin Fell EU. Post me your thoughts of him. And like I said, at one point of his career, he was uh, ninth overall in the nation. The Ducks defense held the opponents under 100 yards rushing. And uh, Feli Yu recorded 25 tackles, four tackles for loss and two sacks. So and that was against Arizona, Arizona State and Oregon State and Utah and Wisconsin. So he got the ability. He just got to harness those things out. And on top of that, according to Pro Football Focus, Fell EU uh, also graded out 90.5 in the Pac-12, number three overall in defensive linemen. Started uh, six games. This is his sophomore year. So there's still rooms to improve at this rate. He recorded 44 tackles and two sacks. So he's pretty much a good serviceable guy inside. So let's see how all of this stuff works out. Post me your thoughts. Post me your concerns down below. That's been my time. I really thank you all for yours. And remember... You're listening to nothing but the bass. Go Cowboys.